Okay, so these instructions said to graph the parabola, find the vertex, focus, directrix, and axis of symmetry. So whenever you start these parabolas, always remember that the x squared term has to be isolated. It's already isolated. So I can go ahead and this is the longer one and my vertex here, this is K. K is always with Y and H is always with X. So my vertex of the parabola is seven comma five. Now, in order to get my focus and my directrix, I need to find the value of P. And the value of P is gonna be taking this number that's in front of the non-squared variable and setting it equal to 4p. So 4p equals 20, I'm sorry. I need to divide both sides by four and p equals five. Now, in order to get your focus point, you're adding the p to the non-squared variable. My non-squared variable is the x. So I'm gonna be doing h plus p comma k. Because again, remember, this is H, this is K. So 7 plus 5, comma 5 was my K. So then once I do this, my focus is the order pair, 12, comma 5. The directrix is always an equation, and it's the non-squared variable. So X equals, and then we're going to take the H, the X of the vertex, and subtract or do the opposite of P. So H was seven, P is five, so seven minus five, and my directric equation is X equals two. And now we can graph this. And again, I'm not gonna expect you to find the axis of symmetry. If you did, it's the squared variable of the vertex. So my axis of symmetry is gonna be, um, y equals five, because that was the squared variable. It's the y. All right, but let's go ahead and graph what we have. Seven comma five is the vertex. So there's my vertex. Then I can graph my focus, and it's gonna go off the, the graph here. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, I can put my focus about here. This is my vertex. And then from there, also graph the directrix. So I could graph my directrix in black here. It's x equals two. Remember the directrix is always behind the parabola. And then go ahead and just make sure your parabola surrounds the focus. Again, I'm not gonna make you find an additional point. Just make sure it's going either a C, a backward C, or a U, or an upside down U. On the test, you're going to have a blank line where you fill in this order pair, this order pair, this equation, and then you're going to graph it. Yeah. So if it's a y squared, we know it's going to be the c or the backward c. Now on this one, remember your goal here was you have to isolate this square term first. So you had to divide both of these by negative 1. So then it was y minus six squared equals negative eight, x minus seven. So you see how your four p value here is negative, so that's why your graph is gonna be the backward c. So when four p is negative, it's the backward c when it's a y squared, and when four p is positive, it's the forward facing c, or the normal c. Okay. But that's how you can tell which way it's gonna go by looking to see which variable is squared. Okay, so for writing the equations, no matter if it's a parabola, an ellipse, or a hyperbola, my advice to you is draw it or sketch out, plot the points. Give yourself a visual so you know which formula you're filling in. So for example, anybody have any preference, four, five, or six? Four. Four. Okay, so let's graph number four. So my vertex is at zero, zero. My focus point is the order pair of one, two, three, four, five, comma, zero. Remember, your parabola 
always surrounds the focus. So this tells me it's going to be the y squared equation. And remember, when your vertex is at 0, 0, you need just the simple um, parabola equation. So what we're going to be filling in is y squared equals 4px. We need to find the p-value. The p-value is the distance from the vertex to the focus, or if you have the directrix, it's the distance from the vertex to the directrix. Good? All right. So I could count the little squares here, or I could, you know, subtract here, and I can see my p-value is 5. Or I could have counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces, so my p-value is 5. So now all I have to do is plug in 5 right here, and I'm done. So it's y squared equals 4 times 5. So y squared equals 20x. And there's your equation. Okay, so again, let's give ourselves a visual. So vertex 0, 0. Um, passing through the ordered pair 3, 6. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's going to be up here. So in order for my parabola to connect that, and again, symmetric to, oh wait, symmetric to the x-axis, whoops. It's going this way. I didn't read that. So symmetric to the x-axis, this one again, it's going to be the same equation, the y squared equation. Now, notice this time I don't have a focus and I don't have a directrix, but I do have an ordered pair. And remember, your ordered pair is xy. So I'm going to be filling in x squared equals 4px. And now I can fill in the x and the y and solve for p, but then plug it back in again. So let me fill in what I have. So I have x, uh, I mean y is 6, and then my x is 3. So 36 equals, and multiply 4 and 3. I'm solving for p, divide by 12, 3 equals p. I'm now going to take what p equals and plug it back in. So then it becomes y squared equals 4 times 3x, so y squared equals 12x. Okay, so again, you're going to get, now also on the test, in addition to finding center, vertices, foci. It's also going to ask you to fill in the co-vertices. So it'll have a blank line for that as well. So for the ellipse, what we're going to do is, remember, the bigger number is always your a squared. So my a squared is 49. My b squared is the 16. I need the C value in order to find the focus. So C squared equals A squared minus B squared. So I need to fill it in. So 49 minus 16, C squared equals 33. And then square root it, plus and minus 33. Because, um... Wherever the bigger number is, that's your major axis. So since, like he said, since the 49 is under the y squared, the major axis is going to be vertical, and then the minor axis will be the x axis, or, or horizontal. So let's go ahead and find our a value. We always use the a to find the vertices, and we're going to use the b for the co-vertices. Why did I write a 4? That's a 7. Oops, let me fix all this. A squared 49, square root of 49 is 7. And then here, this one was 16. So 4. All right, very good so far. So now, this one's got the center at 0, 0. Nothing is being added or subtracted to the x squared and the y squared. So my center is 0, 0. So this one's a little bit easier 
because my vertices are just this. It's just going to be 0, comma, negative 7, 0, comma, positive 7. Because again, that 49 was under the Y, so that's where I'm putting the A. So these are my vertices. So the co-vertices, that's just going to put the 4 in the X spot, because that's your minor axis. So negative 4, comma, 0, and 4, comma, 0, those are your co-vertices. And then for the two foci, we're going to use the square root of 33. It's the same as the vertice. So negative square root 33 and positive. I'm okay with you keying something like this or, type, or handwriting it in as 0 plus or minus square root 33 when you're listing the foci. Same thing on the vertices. Okay, so now let's graph it. So I'm going to graph my vertices. So 0, 7. And then 0, negative 7. And then the minor. And now connect your red and your blue dots. And again, don't make it diagonal. We need to make it like an oval shape. And then add in your center and your two foci. We're going to approximate the foci square root of 33. So this is between 5 and 6. I'd say it's about in the middle. So I'll say, we could just say 5.5. It really doesn't matter. It's going by 1s. So I'll graph my two focus points, um, one at negative 5.5. So one, two, three, four, five. So about there and about there. All right, let's do, 11 looks harder. We'll do 11. Give yourself the visual. One, two. One, two, three, four, one, two. So we have a vertice here and here. So you can already see it's horizontal. So this tells me that I'm going to be filling in y minus k squared. And then this is an ellipse, so plus x minus h squared. And we can see that the a squared has to be under the y. Actually, wait, I told you to... Let me back it up. So x minus h squared, y minus k squared, and then a squared is going to be here, b squared is here. If you look at the video at the, the solution file, she did she didn't keep x and y in the same spot for the ellipse. When I taught it, I told you to leave the x squared and the y squared in the same spot for the ellipse and move the a squared b squared. Technically, it doesn't matter because addition is commutative. So you could have switched it up and your answer could be how she has it written in the solution file. So I can already see um, that it's going to be vertical. So this is the equation I'm filling in. Now, my minor axis, its length is 2b. So set 2b equal to 4, b equals 2. So b squared is 4. That's one of the things I need to fill in. I also need to find the center. So I can either count the little squares in between these two points, or I could also do the midpoint formula. So I could add 2 plus 2, divide by 2, 4 plus negative 2, divide by 2, 4 over 2, 2 over 2, 2 comma 1 is going to be my center. This is my HK. I also need this to fill in. Now I just have to figure out how far is the center from the vertice to get my A value. And I can see that it's going to be three spaces away. So A equals three. So A squared equals nine. So now I'm filling in A squared, B squared, and my HK. And I'm done. 
So my final answer here is going to be x minus 2 squared over 4 plus y minus 1 squared over 9 equals 1. And that's your lips. We need to set this equation equal to 1. So what I need to do is get rid of this 2. So really what I'm doing is multiplying everything by 2 here. But this will simplify. That'll become a 16. That'll become a 25. And then that simplifies and it becomes a 1. So now I have y minus 2 squared over 16 minus x plus 1 squared over 25 equals 1. Now it looks like it needs to look. So my when it's going to be the hyperbola on this one, a squared is always first. So my a squared is 16. My b squared is 25. And then for c, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So 16 plus 25, I'm going to add them and I get 41 square root it. So it's plus and minus 41. Good so far? Yeah. Okay. So now I need to find, I can pull out my center. My center, this is K. This is H. So my center is going to be the order pair negative 1, positive 2. Good so far? All right. For the vertices, it's going to use the A. And what we're going to add the A to is going to be the variable it was underneath. A squared was under Y, so it's going to be H and then K plus or minus A. So it'll be negative 1, and then it'll be 2, and then I guess square root this. So A is plus or minus 4. So A minus, or 2 minus 4, and then 2 plus 4. So then negative 1 minus, and that gives me negative 2, negative 1 comma 6. Good so far on the vertices. Okay, so now I need to find the focus point. So for my foci, I'm doing the same thing that I added in my vertex, but instead of A, I add C to the K. So then this becomes negative one, and then two minus the square root of 41, and then negative one, two plus the square root of 41. Good there? Yes. Okay. And then now I need the asymptotes. On the test, we're going to do asymptotes, right? Correct. You have to graph them. I need to see them. So asymptotes, so for this one, now, okay, correct, A over B. So it's going to be Y equals and then I'm filling in K plus or minus A over B, and then X minus H. So my K value was, where's my center? Uh, two, and then plus or minus my A was four, and then I never finished B is equal to plus and minus five. So four over five, and then X, and it's negative one, so negative negative becomes plus one. So that's your asymptote. Now, I don't really need to worry about working with the whole equation. Remember, when you go to graph them, all you're gonna do is use the slope. And you're gonna move that slope from the center point. So the first thing you're gonna do is graph that center point. So the negative one, positive two. From there, I'm gonna rise four and run five. Right there. And then I could also go down, one, two, three, four, and then over here. Then I can also go up four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, over here, and then over here. Notice what's happening here is it's making a box around that center. You don't have to draw the box, but what we're going to do is connect these now, and these become the asymptotes. Then you're going to graph the vertices. So I have a vertice at negative 1 and negative 2. Good. 
right there. And then I have one at negative one, positive six. So two, three, four, five, six. Use the asymptotes as the guide. And then also graph the two foci. And your focus points, if you approximate the square root of 41, it's in between 49. So we could say the square root of 41 may be about 6.5, so halfway in between. So this will become 2 minus 6.5, so it'll be negative 1, negative 4.5. And then this one will be 2 plus 6.5, so negative 1, 8.5. So I can go ahead and put those two on. So negative 1, negative 4.5. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So right around here. And then 8 and a half. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So up here. And there's your hyperbola. Then to write an equation of the hyperbola, give yourself a visual. We're, this time they're giving us covertices. So one, two, three, one, two, and seven, negative two. So four, five, six, seven. So these are the covertices. So these are going to be the endpoints of your minor axis. Okay, so my center is this is your HK. Just like he said, it's negative uh so it's five negative two question so i can see the distance between three negative two and seven negative two that's got my b value is going to be four good with that yeah. okay so my b value actually that's oh this is 2B, the length of the whole thing. Or you could have found the center and you could have counted the distance. So B equals 2. Everybody good there? Yeah. So B squared is 4. All right, so then now this is the slope here. So it's negative 5 over 1. And because my thing is going to be, my major axis is Y, it's going to be A over B. You with me there? So already I know B, so I could put A over 2 equals negative 5 over 1, and then A equals negative 10. Good there? Or 10, sorry. Oh, it's plus minus. Never mind. It's just 10. It's not negative 5. You with me? So then a squared equals 100. Mm -hmm. So now your equation is going to be y plus 2 over 100 minus x minus 5 squared over 4 equals 1.